Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we're going to be looking at lines of symmetry in quilts. Uh, we are in our math journal on pages 280 and 281, Unit 8, Lesson 4, Symmetry in Quilting Patterns. Now, as you can see on page 280, I have a number of different types of quilt patterns. Now, if you're not familiar with a quilt is, it's like a blanket that is stitched together with a number of scraps of cloth, sometimes uh, deliberately to make intricate patterns and sometimes just whatever you have left over. Here we have some specific patterns that look deliberate. And the question is, how many lines of symmetry do these quilting patterns contain? Okay? Now, if you look at the pinwheel pattern to begin with, when there's no color assigned, there are four lines of symmetry. A vertical line, a horizontal line, and then two diagonal lines, like so. But when you assign color to some of those triangles, or make squares out of the two triangles, uh, it then reduces the number of lines of symmetry. Like for example, as you can see, in the second pattern, which has some large triangles on the left and right hand side, because of that, it creates a situation where there's only two lines of symmetry, horizontal and vertical. Okay? With this next pattern, uh, next to the, the one before it, because there's that V shape, I cannot make a symmetrical line anywhere except vertically. Okay? And again, the definition of symmetry is that both sides are mirror images of one another. Okay, So if I take a look at this left side, okay, I've got a gray triangle from the top left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner, and then I have a gray triangle from the top left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner, like so. What you see on the other side is a mirror image. Okay, so when we're looking at symmetry, we're trying to see what happens when we create a line that cuts a shape in half and do both ends look like they belong on either side of a mirror. Like if you look at this shape here where it says there are zero lines of symmetry, if I look right here on this side of my green diagonal line, okay, I've got a gray triangle here. So on the opposite side, there should be a gray triangle here, but that one is white. So that means that they are not symmetrical because they don't look like mirror images. Okay? So let's get into some of these other patterns. Okay? So again, on the first pattern, the bow tie pattern, since there's no color assigned, we can create four lines of symmetry. A vertical line, like so a horizontal line, and then I can cut this in half diagonally, like so. Because on either side, I'm going to see the same thing. Okay. Now, so down here at the bottom, I would just write the number 4. There are four lines of symmetry. Now, when I look at the pattern to the right of it, as you can see, all four of the squares look exactly the same. There's a white section, uh, which is a pentagon, because that's five sides, uh, left blank. Three of the other four parts are uh, colored dark gray, and then the square that's in the center, that's 45 degrees, uh, is light gray. Okay? Now, you would think that these would be symmetrical, because you're seeing the same pattern over and over again. But again, symmetry means mirror image. Okay, so if I draw a line between the left side and the right side, I've got a blank section here on my right, but then I've got a gray section there on my left. They are not mirror images, so that means they are not symmetrical. Matter of fact, there is no way to make this symmetrical except this way. So let me erase some of my marks here. I can make a line of symmetry that's diagonal, starting from the top left-hand corner, going all the way to the bottom right. If you tilt this shape 45 degrees, which 
I will be able to do by using a little bit of digital trickery there. When I turn this sideways, as you can see, uh, the left side and right side look like mirror opposites. Okay, so I'm going to put that off to the side. So that means there's only one line of symmetry for this shape. Okay? Now, where I had to cut and paste some digital lines, you can just turn your uh, math journal sideways to look at each particular shape to see if there is, in fact, a line of symmetry. Okay? So when you're going through this uh, exercise, you're going to be turning your, your book right side up and upside down, left and right, and spinning around to see if you can see mirror images uh, on either side. The best way to do so is to orient the shape so that there's a left side and a right side, because that's probably the easiest way we think about mirror images. Okay? So your job is to go through each of these patterns and ask yourself, if I were to fold this in half, would both folds or both sides of that fold look identical or it will look like mirror images of each other, or it look nothing alike. Okay, that's how I determine lines of symmetry. Okay. Then when we get to the second section here, it says some patterns called nine patch patterns look like they are made up of nine squares. So you can make your own nine patch pattern on a three by three grid. Okay. So the idea here is that you're going to create some different patterns. Okay, uh, that have either four lines of symmetry, two lines of symmetry, or no lines of symmetry, okay? So I'll give you an example. So uh, a shape that would have four lines of symmetry, I could just fill in one square, like so, and that would allow me to cut this into four different lines of symmetry. I'll show you. I can make a diagonal here, I can make a diagonal here, I can do a vertical line, leave those a little off center, and horizontal line. And all I'm going to see is that blue square in the center, and any direction I decide to fold this shape in half, I'm going to have two sides that are mirror images of each other. Okay? I could do another pattern by, say, creating a pattern like so. Okay? Filling in four out of the eight or I'm sorry, nine squares in this nine square pattern, okay? And because they are equidistant from each other, okay, that allows for a mirror image. Let me show you just one line here. If I cut this vertically like so, okay, I have half of a square on the right side and then half of a square on the left. I have complete squares here and then again some half squares on the bottom. Okay. The same would happen if I drew a horizontal line. It, it's just that the positioning of the half squares and the full squares would be oriented differently. Okay. So this, too, has four lines of symmetry. So on page 281, this is where you get to use a little bit of creativity in this math assignment, where you get to create some patterns uh, that uh, either allow for lines of symmetry or restrict lines of symmetry. Okay. This is the fun part of math that we don't often get to talk about a lot. It's a lot of interior design, fabric design, which lends itself to fashion and clothing design, um, creating uh, visuals that are like, say, uh, video game graphics. All these require us to understand these principles of symmetry. Uh, Matter of fact, any graphic that you see in any device, whether it's printed on paper or it's a, a flickering on a, a screen, uh, those images are just a series of tiny little pixels, tiny little squares that are broken down into tiny little colors. Okay, if you've ever zoomed in on a photo, uh, it gets uh, as it gets bigger, or are you focusing on the smaller aspects of the photo? Those uh, images or the the details get more grainy and more chunky and more boxish because you're focusing in on those what they call pixels okay so being able to identify lines of symmetry in this way allows you to understand how all visual representations are created for both 
uh, printed pictures in a magazine or a book or anything that you see on TV or on the movies or on your computer screen. Okay? So give these problems a try. If you get stuck on the, uh, the symmetry issues, well, then you just need to talk to your math teacher. They will happily uh, sit down with you, spin that uh, math journal around and orient it so that you can see those lines of symmetry or see why there aren't any. Okay? Until then, friends, have a good day. Thanks.